Good morning. It is 11.48 a.m. on Friday. Friday the 28th of April 2023. I'm sorry about the noise outside. It's over the road. They're building. We're on Friday, third week of Easter. I will be sharing with you the liturgical readings for today. Um, a reading from the Book of Acts of the Apostles. I have them all written down. Um, the Acts of the Apostles 9, 120, Psalm 116, um, the Gospel of John 6, verses 52 to 59. I'm going to the Latin Mass tomorrow in my hometown, so I'm going to record as many uh, as I'm able before I go to stay in Kings Lynn because I can't get there from here, 28 miles without a car. I have to get two buses and be up earlier than I'd like to be. <laughs> I'm not very good at getting up in the mornings. So I'll just begin with a couple of prayers as I usually do what's happening to my voice today but it doesn't seem as it should in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen prayer to my guardian angel O angel of God my guardian dear to whom God's love commits me here ever this day be at my side to light, to guard, to rule and guide. Amen. And a prayer to Saint Michael the Archangel. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend me in the day of battle. Be my safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, I humbly pray. And do you, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell, Satan, and all the other evil spirits who prowl through the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. In trouble, in all things, may the most holy, the most just, and the most lovable will of God be done. Praised and exalted above all for ever, your will be done, O Lord, your will be done. The Lord has given, the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And in sickness and in pain, your will be done. I take any pain, especially my back, for my sins. I offer up to you my sufferings, together with all that my Saviour has suffered for me. And I beg you, through his sufferings, to have mercy on me. Free me from this back pain, if you will, and if it be for my good. You love me too much to let me suffer unless it be for my good. Therefore, O Lord, I trust myself to you. Do with me as you please, in sickness and in health. I wish to love you always. And a prayer for priests. Father, you have appointed your Son, Jesus Christ, eternal High Priest. Guide those he has chosen, Father Paolo, F Father Enrico, to be ministers of word and sacrament and help them to be faithful in fulfilling the ministry they have received. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. And a prayer before reading sacred scripture. Open my heart, O Holy Spirit, to receive your inspired word. Grant me wisdom to understand what you want to teach me, and strength of will to follow wherever you lead. Amen. The general theme for today is Paul is converted by the risen Lord on the road to Damascus. The same Jesus is present in the Eucharist, where he is our pledge of eternal communion with the Father. The first reading is taken from the book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 9, 1 to 20. 
and the theme. This man is my chosen instrument to bring my name before pagans. Saul was still breathing threats to slaughter the Lord's disciples. He had gone to the high priest and asked for letters addressed to the synagogues in Damascus that would authorise him to arrest and take to Jerusalem any followers of the way, men or women, that he could find. Suddenly, while he was travelling to Damascus, and just before he reached the city, there came a light from heaven all round him. He fell to the ground, and then he heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Who are you, Lord? he asked. And the voice answered, I am Jesus, and you are persecuting me. Get up now and go into the city, and you will be told what you have to do. The men travelling with Saul stood there speechless, for though they heard the voice, they could see no one. Saul got up from the ground, but even with his eyes wide open, he could see nothing at all, and they had to lead him into Damascus by the hand. For three days he was without sight, and took neither food nor drink. A disciple called Ananias, who lived in Damascus, had a vision in which he heard the Lord say to him, Ananias, when he replied, Here I am, Lord, the Lord said, You must go to Straight Street and ask at the house of Judah, for someone called Saul, who comes from Tarsus. At this moment he is praying, having had a vision of a man called Ananias coming in and laying hands on him to give him back his sight. When he heard that, Ananias said, Lord, several people have told me about this man and all the harm he has been doing to your saints in Jerusalem. He has only come here because he holds a warrant from the chief priests to arrest everybody who invokes your name. The Lord replied, You must go all the same, because this man is my chosen instrument to bring my name before pagans and pagan kings and before the people of Israel. I myself will show him how much he himself must suffer for my name. Then Ananias went. He entered the house and at once laid his hands on Saul and said, Brother Saul, I have been sent by the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on your way here, so that you may recover your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately it was as though scales fell away from Saul's eyes, and he could see again. So he was baptised there and then, after taking some food, he regained his strength. After he had spent only a few days with the disciples in Damascus, he began preaching in the synagogues. Jesus is the Son of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm is 116 and one of the responses is Go out to the whole world.
proclaim the good news and Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. O oh, praise the Lord, all you nations, acclaim him, all you peoples. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. It was ordained that the Christ should suffer and rise from the dead and so enter into his glory. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood lives in me and I live in him, says the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John, chapter 6, 52 to 59. Glory to you, O Lord. The theme. For my flesh is real food and my blood is real drink. The Jews started arguing with one another. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? They said. Jesus replied, I tell you most solemnly, if you do not eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you will not have life in you. Anyone who does eat my flesh and drink my blood, has eternal life, and I shall raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood lives in me, and I live in him. As I who am sent by the living Father, myself draw life from the Father. So whoever eats me will draw life from me. He taught this doctrine at Capernaum in the synagogue. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Notwithstanding, the Jews were used to sacrificing animals. They were used to the terminology. It was part of their culture from, from the beginning of their faith, really. And, and so it wasn't unusual to talk about eating the flesh and drinking the blood and all this. But the shocking thing was, it, a human being, they saw Jesus as a human being. And, well, they couldn't get their heads around that. It was really, really offensive for them and many just would not and could not accept that. And although they they appreciated Jesus in a very special way, they just, they couldn't follow him. Uh, many of them went away. Uh, there's a wonderful painting of the scene in today's first reading, The Call of Paul, though, in a church in Rome by the artist Caravaggio. Um, the image is the, to the right. Um, I have a, a picture of it. Um, and the artist does not depict the risen Lord, only the impact of the risen Lord on Paul. And Paul is lying on the ground with his arm raised towards the heavens as light falls on him from above. 
A large horse stands behind the prone Paul, occupying the centre of the painting. The painting conveys a sense of this powerful figure, now rendered helpless before the risen Lord. In his weakness, he is ready to be redirected by the Lord. The helplessness, <coughs> excuse me, and weakness of Paul is conveyed in the first reading by the depiction of the blind Paul. I mean, that's one thing that many of us dr would dread because our eyes are our life and we, uh, we use our eyes all the time and not to be able to see would be more than a great punishment. You know, it, you, your life would feel destroyed, wouldn't it? So... And, and he was a, a Pharisee, a scribe, wasn't he? So, I mean, he would have been using his eyes reading scriptures. So, Paul having to be led by the hand into the city of Damascus, a city he had expected to be riding into confidently and authoritatively to arrest those Christians, early new Christians. Yet the Lord had wonderful plans for this almost helpless figure, as the Lord said to Ananias, this man is my chosen instrument to bring my name before pagans and pagan kings and before the people of Israel. It was as if Paul had to become like a little child, needing to be led before the Lord could work through him with great power. Indeed, Jesus said that unless we become like little children, we cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. Sometimes it is our very weakness that gives the Lord scope to work through us most fully, whereas when we are overconfident and too sure of our own ability and success, we can block the Lord from working through us. We do not draw life from ourselves, but from the Lord. In the Gospel, reading Jesus declares, Whoever eats me will draw life from me. So we need to be in communion with the Lord if in our presence in the world is to be truly life-giving in the way Jesus' presence was, even when we cannot eat the Lord's body and drink his blood in the Eucharist, we can still remain in communion with him. We can open our hearts and souls to his presence wherever we are, especially through prayer. When we do that, like Paul we too can become the Lord's chosen instruments to bring his presence into the lives of others. And obviously, daily reading of scripture, praying the rosary, learning all the um, magisterium of the Catholic Church, living the faith as it was taught from the beginning, and the prayers. You can never pray too much. And you can never learn too much. So we have to learn and pass it on and teach it if we're able to. Um, if we have that ability or gift or wisdom or knowledge or even a small amount. Even knowing one prayer and teaching it to someone is good. And of course, the Lord's Prayer is one that we should always be sharing. And the Rosary. You don't have to do the whole of the five decades at once. You can share one at a time. You can do it at different times of the day. And the Angelus, too, is important. Um, I mean, there's so many prayers that, that we need to know. And um, evening prayers and morning prayers. I've got lots of prayer books all around me. And um, um, I'm just going to see... Which ones? The Jesus Prayer, the Apostles' Creed, 
and St. Patrick's Breastplate, a Prayer of Francis, the Angelus. Maybe some of you don't even know the Angelus. Just see what page that's on. Yes, you can do this morning, midday and evening. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, and she conceived of the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And then, Behold the handmaid of the Lord. The response, Be it done unto me according to your word. And then, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the word was made flesh, and the response, and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And then pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, and the response, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. And then from Easter Sunday until Pentecost, the following prayers are said in place of the above verses which I've just read and the responses, and that this is the prayer. O Queen of Heaven, rejoice, Alleluia, for he whom you were worthy to bear, Alleluia, he has risen as he said, Alleluia. Pray for us to God, Alleluia. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. And of course we've done all the stations of the cross and um, the Hail Holy Queen, which is said after the um, um, rosary, is this hail holy queen mother of mercy hail our life our sweetness and our hope to thee do we cry poor banished children of eve to thee do we send up our sighs mourning and weeping in this valley of tears turn then most gracious advocate thine eyes of mercy toward us and after this our exile Show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, response, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. And then let us pray. O God, whose only begotten Son, by his life, death and resurrection, has purchased for us the rewards of eternal life. Grant, we beseech thee, that meditating upon these mysteries of the most holy rosary of the Blessed Virgin Mary, we may imitate what they contain and obtain what they promise through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And there's a prayer to our Redeemer. Soul of Christ, make me holy. Body of Christ, be my salvation. Blood of Christ, let me drink your wine. Water flowing from the side of Christ, wash me clean. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. Kind Jesus, hear my prayer. Hide me within your wounds and keep me close to you. Defend me from the evil enemy, 
Call me at my death to the fellowship of your saints, so that I may sing your praise with them through all eternity. Amen. That's a prayer from the Roman Missal. The next prayer that I'll share is the prayers of self-dedication by St. Ignatius of Loyola. Dearest Lord, teach me to be generous. Teach me to serve you as you deserve. To give and not to count the cost. To fight and not to heed the wounds. To toil and not to seek for rest. To labour and not to ask for any reward save that of knowing that I do your will. Amen. And this one is also from St. Ignatius of Loyola. Receive, Lord, all my liberty, my memory, my understanding, and my whole will. You have given me all that I have, all that I am, and I surrender all to your divine will, that you dispose of me. Give me only your love and your grace. With this I am rich enough, and I have no more to ask. Amen. And a prayer in difficult times is by Emily Dixon. At least to pray is left, is left. O oh Jesus, in the air. I know not which thy chamber is, I am knocking everywhere. Thou settest earthquake in the south, and maelstrom in the sea. Say, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, hast thou no arm for me? Amen. And then there's a blessing of a home. And then there's a blessing of a family. And uh, the reading for the blessing of the family is interesting. But I'll do the blessing. It says, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with this house and all who live here and also with you. So I'm reading this for all of us. The reading is, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, Clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness and patience. Bear with one another and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other. Above all, clothe yourselves with love which binds everything together in perfect harmony and let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts to which indeed you were called in the one body, Colossians three twelve to 15 And Lord, we ask you to bestow on this family and all your families the fat riches of your blessing. With the gift of your grace, sanctify those who live here and there, so that the faithful to your commandments, they will care for each other, ennoble this world by their lives, and reach the homes you have prepared for them in heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the God of hope fill you with every joy in believing. May the peace of Christ abound in your hearts. May the Holy Spirit enrich you with his gifts now and forever. Amen. I'll do the blessing of the elderly tomorrow because it looks like it is quite long. Thank you so much for listening. May God bless you and heal you. I'm sending you his peace in abundance. And may you always be happy and joyful in the Lord. And finally, the prayers from after reading sacred scripture. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for the word you have spoken to me. Through the treasure of the scriptures, make these words a living reality in my life, a constant guide, a lamp to my feet, and a light to my path. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, guide us, work in us with your gifts, so that your presence may be shown, and we may serve in different ways for the good of all. Amen. Spirit of the living God, 
You alone search out everything, even the depths of God's intentions. Remain with us always that we may know all that God has freely bestowed on us, that we may rightly judge and value all things. Amen. Lead me, O Holy Spirit, that I may put to death all sinful thoughts and actions. Lead me, O Holy Spirit, that I may live as God's child. Lead me, O Holy Spirit, that I may be free from slavery to sin. Lead me, O Holy Spirit, that I may pray and cry out, Abba, Father. Lead me, O Holy Spirit, that I may possess the inheritance of grace that awaits me. Amen. God bless you all. Have a perfect weekend, a happy holy weekend and enjoy the rest of your day and bank holiday. Oh, I'm going to Walsingham, so you might not hear anything from me on Monday. I have no idea. I don't know what time I'll get back or what condition I'll be in because every time I leave home and come back, I'm exhausted. God bless. Have a wonderful time with your family and loved ones. I'll be praying for you all at Walsingham. God bless.